Hey y'all, it's Ben and Andrea. Hey. It is not a day we look forward to, but the day has come. We got to thin down some animals on this farm. We've got way too many mouths to feed. Our feed bill is crazy right now. Really crazy. So today's the day. Uh, we're gonna take you guys and we're gonna show you what we are going to thin out and how we're gonna do it. So let's get busy. Okay, so first things first. We have been raising our first batch of American breast chickens. And we have big plans for these. We've kept, we wound up, we had 25, actually 24 we were able to raise. That, that just does not happen for us on Cornish Cross. And the only one we lost was our own fault because we were moving the chicken tractor and had a mishap with that. That was our fault. So, or else we would have had 100% success raising them from little bitty chicks all the way up. That, that right there speaks volumes to me. So we separated out, out of those 24, we wound up having, trying to get the numbers right for you guys. We have a pen of 10 roosters we're gonna process. And then, so that leaves 14 others. Four of which I believe are roosters and 10 are hens. Is that what I told you, Ben? That there's 10 hens? Yes. I'm 99% sure that's what I said. So we will have four roosters left and 10 hens once we get these 10 processed. These are probably 16 weeks old. I'm gonna show them to you here in a second. And they look really good. Now Cornish, we raised them to, we've been doing about seven to eight weeks. So this, this is twice as long, obviously, you, you know that. But um, I've still gotta put some pencil to paper about how much more feed they ate because they do eat less at a time than the Cornish. But it's over a longer period of time. So I'll be telling y'all that later. Today is just to get these processed, it's time, and to see what their carcasses look like, how much meat's on them. And then we're actually going to cook one today and taste it and try it out. So this is step one today. Get these processed, and then we got more animals to process. Okay, so these right here are some uh, little chicken tractors that we've built. We've actually, I think had four different styles of chicken tractors. These here for small batches of birds work the best. The only thing is, is with these birds, they can fly, the Cornish Cross can't. So with Cornish Cross, we would just take the tarp off of the top, step in there, pick them up and grab them out. We can't do that with these. So I've made a couple of these. This, uh, this is out of some rebar panel, just something I had laying around. You just build a little hook. You reach down. I turn the end of it out to help grab a little better. But you grab their foot, and when you do, it can't get past their knee joint or whatever, and you'll be able to grab them. So if you got chickens loose, you can use a fishing net or these right here. It's like Ben was saying, one did fog me in the eye, actually, right across here. It was my fault. I actually got down in here with them. It was when I was separating them. I got in the chicken tractor with them and was catching them. And yeah, that's, I brought it on myself. So, so we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna do it again. Okay, we're not gonna actually show you the dispatching them. Uh, they're gonna go in these cones. That's one thing I wanna say. We actually invested in a plucker when we first started this, several years ago. We were processing our own chickens. I'm gonna start. But, okay, I'll, I'll turn away. But that's about one of the only things we've actually bought. You can see over there we use like a turkey fryer or a fish cooker to heat up water to scald them. These are old traffic cones that we found and just a little wooden box to hold them up. We have done this basically as DIY and as cheap as possible. That's just us. And if we can make it, we're gonna make it. Now we did invest in the plucker, like I said, you can make those yourself. You can buy the parts and do it, but it is more involved to do that. And so we did invest in that. All right, we're gonna get busy processing these. All right, so we're, this is not a tutorial on how to butcher chickens, but I am gonna give you some quick 
tips and tricks if maybe you've done it and it didn't work really that great or maybe you've never done it but or maybe you've done it a ton and you might just learn something people do things all different ways but we have got our water a little too warm we have got two chickens dispatch the way we do it just because we can crank through cleaning some chickens in a matter of just a few hours but we will as soon as some come out of the cones we're getting the next ones in now a few more people is always helpful my parents helped us many times lane and emily so just ben and i it's going to be a bit more time consuming probably so but we would get two more going bleeding out and then um, he's getting the water temperature checked let me show you that so we got the water a little too warm really about the perfect temperature is about 145 degrees 148 is perfect. Oh. 148 it's at like 168 so really the remedy for that he's taking some out and we're gonna add some cool water out of the water hose you really don't want it too hot you'll start cooking your chickens but you don't want it too cool either so you really got to get pretty close i'm not talking about down to the tenth of a degree but i'm talking about in a in a pretty close range and you need something to keep checking your temperature and a lot of times we do 145 to 150 148 is perfect so we're getting that perfect and then we're going to dip these um you want to dip these really ideally again the perfect is about 45 seconds so if you could just remember, like you said, 148, but if you just need a simple thing to remember, if you could remember 145 for 45, um, you're pretty close. You'll be in pretty good shape. And then always the feather pull test is the next. All right, we're down to 140. We're bouncing, yeah. Yep. All right, so the feather pull test, when you're done, you'll want to pull on wing finger, or wing finger, wing <laughs> feather, or a tail feather. And if them pull out, the rest of them are really good to go. So we're fixing to dunk these. Another little tip I want to point out. You can see how clean their feet are. Uh, that is because we moved them to fresh ground. Get them out of the nastiness they're in like the day before you're going to do this. And then move them again the morning you're going to do this. You'll just have a much cleaner bird to work with. You don't want them in like a wet, icky area, just caking up on their feet. It's, it stinks and it's just a mess. Tell you there's not really a better investment if you're going to do several birds than one of these them don't compare to the size of a cornish no <laughs> nowhere near uh -uh. so our specific plucker we bought it ourselves long before we had a youtube channel so don't think this is any sort of promotion it's called a star pluck and i know i tell you guys that sometimes but it's because i want you to know like if i'm if i have no affiliation with the company i'm going to tell you that because i don't want you to think like i'm just telling you that no we bought the thing and we love it um so we are going to get some more bleeding out and then we're going to process these like ben said already can tell these are not as big and fat not necessarily fat but not as big and meaty. big and meaty yeah don't have the don't have the meat on them right so hey, uh, we'll see I, s I sharpened your knives. You yeah. make me a promise. Though. What? Do not cut your finger off. I'll try. They're razor sharp. I'll try. Promise? I'll try. Promise yeah. you'll try? I promise I'll try. So I've made pretty in-depth videos before, so I'm not trying to necessarily teach y'all how to do it. But first off, I'm right-handed, so I got to have this spun around like this. First thing I do is cut off the head, and I use a hatchet and a... Just piece of wood, that's what we found to work best. And you don't have to completely cut it off. You're just, you're just breaking, you know, the bones in there so that you can get the rest of it off. Um, people will cook chicken necks and make them into broth. So what you do with it from there is up to you. And then I will go ahead and trim around this joint 
there's no like breaking bones if you can get in between the joint it'll just come right off pretty easy i can do a chicken really in no time but it just takes practice okay so i've got it trimmed up now all i have left to do is gut it so right here below the breastbone i'm gonna cut a slit be careful don't go too far because the guts are right in there you can see i mean they're literally right there you nick those you're gonna have a mess withdraw food like 12 hours before you do this you'll have a lot less of a mess on your hand another word of caution you don't want to break this i believe that's like i guess that's the gallbladder i don't know it's got like green bile in it um, just trust me don't break that looks like something radioactive and i'm gonna go ahead and slit this right here just to loosen this up to get these guts out they should all just kind of pull out you'll feel something like pulling against you and that is going to be connected all the way up to the windpipe and if you'll just get gentle pressure it'll pull the crawl that has food in it it'll pull the windpipe and everything but if you just jerk and if this has feet in it, you can see some grass in it. It will just break and you'll, again, you'll have a mess. So gentle pressure is the name of the game. And I was wrong. I haven't done this in a while. That's not connected to the windpipe. That's actually, that's the digestive tract. I don't know what I was thinking. That was stupid. But you can reach up in there and grab the windpipe and pull that out. You're going to feel all this up in there. So now... I've got all the guts out except for it's connected down here to the exit spot. So what I do is just trim like a little U shape down here and just take it all out. And I actually take this tail. Let me show you this. So there's this, this is their tail. There's scent glands in here. People will like trim and trim. I just take the whole tail off because it makes the guts all come out kind of intact. And see, nothing's broken. I don't have a big mess. If you want to harvest the liver, it's right there. Um, if you want to harvest, you know, the gizzard or the heart or all that, it's just right in here. See, that's the heart. You can just, you can trim on it and you don't have a big, you know, nasty stinking mess. Okay, we finished. That didn't take a super long time, but it definitely took longer with just Ben and I at it. We've got them cooling, got some ice on them. Just gonna let those kind of rest for a bit. And we are moving on. Now we are gonna process some rabbits. Our rabbit population has literally gone out of control. So we're gonna process some rabbits. Totally different process than chicken. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So what we're about to show you. <laughs> We're tired, aren't we? Yeah. Is how quickly really anything on your farm can get out of control but especially rabbits so that's the we've next thing got we've only got one doe that's what's <laughs> hilarious now yeah we had three at one time but not but I not think for a while are, yeah i think these are all from one mom yeah. but you're saying all that to say that's the next thing we're thinning down yeah yeah that's where we're heading they're right behind y'all. We just haven't made it that far. But we have got three litters right now. We're going to process two of them. Cut down on the feed bill. And just there's only so many cages we have. And it's just we're these are some of the things we do to be sustainable and raise some of our food. And they're just sitting out here getting too big. So that's what we're going to do. Sometimes just life gets away from us. And yeah. we got so stinking many irons in the fire. So, sometimes things <clears throat> just get out of control like the rabbits right so today we're just taking a couple irons out of the fire mm -hmm. all right you ready Let's get so we have got four in this litter we're going to process and then four in this litter too and yeah. we have got rabbit droppings everywhere out here that i need to <clears throat> take time and get on my garden i may wait till this fall and then just spread this all over in my raised beds and I don't know. Are you selling any of them? I'm going to sell some. I have some local people that are on a waiting list. Got to contact them, but we've got a whole nother litter here. Let me show you them. 
So that's a really good looking litter. I think that right there is proof that the Tamek breed, um, this stands for Texas A&M University at Kingston. That's where they were developed. Um, <clears throat> they're made for the heat that we have here in the South because a lot of times rabbits go sterile in the summer and that just shows you right there. That's one of the things bred into these is more resiliency to not, not stop breeding in the summer. And here it is, the heat of summer. And we just had this, this litter a few weeks ago. So uh, I'm really pleased with them. We just have to do a better job managing them. And uh, they're a meat breed. So using them to replace some of our meat, especially some chicken, because it, it's really good. It does taste a lot like chicken. So it has been a while since we have cleaned rabbits. We started out cleaning them on the table and working together and it was a lot and we are tired. <laughs> So after about two of those, we found these hooks. These are just some S hooks up here. And we made a little slit um, between the tendon on their back leg, I guess, and their bone. And that's just where it stuck through. This is how we clean deer, um, pretty much the same way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a cut up here. We're gonna be careful going around this leg because if you cut the tendon on the back, pretty much your, this method is over. So. We're just trying to gently cut the fur. You have to have a sharp knife to do this, but you've also got to just be really careful for your fingers and for the fur, so. So I went around those. Uh, the younger the rabbit, the easier. Uh, we did a few old ones already and they're just a lot tougher. We're gonna eat them, but we may have to boil them or pressure cook them or something. This one's young, already can tell it's tender. This should just slip right off. You can see I'm not really pulling that hard. Um, when you get to this area, you can kind of just push through here with your finger. They're just really easy to uh, skin and take the hide off of. This is, this is gonna break just like that. I'm going to go ahead and pull down the back. Let me go ahead and pull the tail off too. And I know some of y'all right now are like, oh my goodness, that's the bunny's tail. But this is part of raising your own food and being sustainable, things like that. And honestly, being a good steward of what you're raising. So, um, all right, so I'm just slipping this down. I'm gonna go all the way down till I can see like what I call its elbow. So I got that far. Gonna kind of push my fingers through there too because I'm trying to get down to right there. That's where I'm going to kind of cut it off. I won't have to cut through bones if I can get all the way down to that little joint. I can just kind of trim that off. I'm gonna take the head off here in a second and I'm gonna gut it. All right, that was way more tiring than I thought it was gonna be. We are done 10 roosters and eight rabbits later, we have thinned down two different chores that we do every day and, and quite a bit of feed. So we've got the grill going. We are gonna cook some of both and give you our opinion on our first taste of the American breast chicken. So we're gonna get to cooking and I'm hoping it's wonderful after all the work we just did. All right, Andrea got some of it on the smoker. Went ahead and done four rabbits three of the chickens uh, going to wrap one of the chickens as you can see two of them we're going to do just like open like that all of its season uh, the skin on the chicken of course will uh, get crispy and hold the moisture in wasn't exactly sure on the rabbits so I asked her to go ahead and wrap them in full kind of help uh, hold the moisture in and on some of them older ones maybe uh, make them a little more tender we will see how it goes I'm ready because I'm already hungry. Right now it is going at 300 degrees. Set at 335. That's a new smoker that they got me for Christmas. No, birthday. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. All right, we had a shower. We feel a lot better. I'm sure we smell a lot better. So we're going to get this meat off and give it a taste test. Oh man. Okay, we gotta look at one. Slice right there. 
Oh man, this looks beautiful. That is falling apart. And this is one of the big ones I can tell because look how big it is. It's really tender. Does it tastes like chicken. Yeah, just like chicken to me. No, let's get them all off. That's pretty good. You ready? All right, this is a chicken. <laughs> yeah, it is. We gotta pick it up too. Oh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous, I tell you. I don't know, those look a little crispy. Overdone? Probably. We got a little busy. Turn this up, please. Oh. One thing I'm seeing is how dark it is. Yes, the dark meat is, oh wow, it's really tender. Really tender. I mean, it just fell apart in my hand. Okay, so we. I let's mean, we apart. probably overcooked these in fact we did because oh, we got busy doing other things so the skin is crispy which i like but they do look rather dark even kind of overcooked though they still look juicy inside let's see what the breast looks like yeah yeah that... just peel the skin back and let's see like re really what the meat's like mm. there you go Woo! hot oh it's really tender have you ever, do you remember when we've like culled an old rooster before and tried to eat it? Oh, yeah. Compare it to that. <laughs> Compare it to that? I mean, they're not near. It's not stringy like that where you can't hardly get it chewed up. It's not, it's not a Cornish cross, but they're what, double the age? And what do you mean by that? As far as just melting your mouth tenderness, because see, it's still a little stringy, but it don't, it comes apart. It's tender. Yeah. Because like a normally when we've tried to process like an egg layer, it's not tender. Oh no, you can't even hardly eat them. But so this is nowhere near like that. I'm gonna keep eating. Um, where did that other one go? It's over there. So to give it a real test. So it's not blow your mind, but it's good. Blow your mind, good. Yeah. I don't know, because, I mean, that's not a fair assessment. No. I mean, I can't get over how tender they are, though. Right. They are really, really, oh, anything I pull on, it's coming out. So I just can't get over how tender they are. It's definitely not a Cornish cross um, as far as the size and the meatiness, but the flavor is so much better. So overall, I think I want to continue raising these. I was actually just talking talking to Andrew a while ago about not raising them and getting rid of them because I was kind of discouraged on how small they were. But flavor-wise, tenderness, these things are really good. Excuse my wet hair. I just want to say thank you guys for hanging out with us. Ben and I are just trying to figure out what we can do when it's just him and I. And today, we worked. That turned into quite a lot longer job, especially the rabbits. You saw us clean one pretty successfully. We did several that didn't go as well, but we persevered, we got them all cleaned. We cleaned 10 roosters and eight rabbits. Really pleased with that. We cooked a lot tonight and did that on purpose so we can have meals prepared on nights that we're you know, behind or we're busy working or whatever. We've got meat in the freezer that's actually cooked. I'm also thinking of taking some of these and canning them so I've got some canned meat that's cooked and I, we can use more busy um, and we're just in a pickle trying to figure out something to eat for supper. So anyway, phone's going crazy. Thank you guys for hanging out with us and we'll see you guys on the next one. God bless.